Hi everyone and happy new year. Thanks for joining us for our livestock market report. I'm Coulter Brown from the Northern Ag Network. After everything our country went through in 2020, we were hoping for a return to normalcy in 2021, but what a year it turned out to be. The western U.S. battled one of the worst droughts in three decades, and we faced grasshoppers, wildfires, hailstorms, about everything you can think of in the past year. And of course, we saw some fallout from the pandemic with labor shortages, supply chain disruptions, and inflation. Now, livestock prices may not be where we want them to, but in a lot of ways, they were the bright spot in 2021. Today, we're going to put a bow on the past year and look forward to 2022. We'll, of course, talk about the futures and cash markets, look at some projections for next year, examine the calf, cow, and sheep prices, and discuss what to expect in the ongoing cattle market policy debate. We sure enjoyed being able to put these reports together for you. Hopefully you found some insights or helpful information here. Do want to take a moment to thank our sponsors that make this possible. Thank you to Ag Risk Advisors. They've been with us from the very start, and I'd encourage producers to reach out to them in 2022 to help manage price and weather risk. Thank you to Ide Bailey. They're a great resource to help with any tax or estate planning. As you're working on taxes, if you have questions about loss carryovers or drought disaster deferral options, reach out to them at IdeBailey.com. And thank you to Montana Livestock Ag Credit. There does seem to be some uncertainty about interest rates and when they'll be marching higher, but Montana Livestock Ag Credit has been in the ag lending business for nearly 90 years and can help put together financing solutions to fit your needs, whether it's operating or real estate loans. Well, the cattle futures did drift lower in December, but it wasn't a huge surprise as that's some typical seasonal pressure that we usually see towards the end of the year. We did see a pretty strong performance though from the late fall, so these markets are sitting pretty good. You know, when we see that holiday beef buying finish up and we approach these shortened weeks, it is pretty typical to see that market move lower. But if you look at the feeder contracts, they perform pretty well, especially in the face of rising corn prices that got above $6. And actually the deferred contracts for both live and feeder cattle, they worked higher throughout the month, indicating the optimism that's out there for this market in the second half of 2022. Of course, January is a busy time for marketing feeders, so we might see some short-term pressure on the market, but when we get to the spring, prices should find their typical rally. Of course, drought does remain the limiting factor all across the West and now into the Southern Plains too, where their moisture situation isn't looking very price supportive right now. In the fed cattle, feed yards do remain very full, but are regaining currentness. The recent cattle on feed report did reflect the effects of drought, showing increased placements year over year and more lighter weight cattle in feed yards, so timely marketings of cattle will be important, but leverage is turning. The cash fed cattle did peak in early December and then worked a little bit lower. However, fed cattle are up 12% in value compared to their October lows and 22% higher than a year ago. Now we closed 2020 trading fed steers for $1.11. We finished 2021 though at a buck 35 on a live basis and 217 in the beef. Speaking of beef, wholesale beef prices largely leveled out over the past month and are expected to be less volatile in 2022. Box beef is expected to stay in that high $2 money with lower beef production expected this year and domestic demand forecast to remain near 30 year highs. As you're thinking about when to market your cattle in 2022, I'd encourage you to go online to LRPAdvisors.com and check out some of the videos that Ag Risk Advisors has teaching you how to utilize livestock risk protection. Ag Risk Advisors are not insurance generalists. These guys specialize in helping ranchers get the most out of these programs. So there's some great information there. Now looking forward to the projections for 2022, Cattle Facts is saying that fed steers will average $1.40 this year and may get as high as a buck 55. Eight weight yearlings are forecast with an average at 168 and mother nature will play a big role in the calf market this year. We're praying for a break from drought conditions and Cattle Facts says we could get as high as 230 in the spring on those five and a half weight steers with a low during the fall run at 170 for an annual average at 205. Now comparing back to last year, the calf market has already made a lot of ground. One year ago at Torrington Livestock, 550 to 600 pound steers averaged a buck 61. At the last sale of 2021, they were at 186. That's a 16% gain year over year. Now I don't mean to suggest that everything is great in the cattle business. In a lot of cases, feed costs are nearly double a year ago and 
pretty well every expense item is higher than it was last year. But, you know, as we're looking at these feed costs, they're likely to stay elevated. Hay prices are not likely to come down even with normal production. Corn price is expected to stay high and we will feel some inflationary pressure, but it does look like cattle prices will provide an opportunity for improved profitability. Looking at the last sale of the year from Saint Aunt, or from Stockman's Livestock Exchange, rather five to five and a half weight steers sold from 194 to 202. Upper five weights 179 to 187. Six to six and a half weights 170 to 188. Upper six weight steers brought 168 to 175, and the seven weights from the high 160s to mid 170s. It'll be very interesting to watch what this bred female in the market does in 2022. Now, prices will probably be regionally specific depending on the forage and moisture situation, but it's reasonable to expect a 7 to 10 percent increase in prices. At the Pays Blue Ribbon Special in early December, we saw bred heifers average 1617, topping out at 1875. Young bred cows found a peak at 1800 with an average of 1585 and middle aged bred cows 1200 to 1650 averaging 1445. Coal cows have been trading steady to a little bit higher. Now the better cows there in Brush, Colorado, they brought over the 60 cent mark, but still a lot of cows selling in the 50s and the low end primarily down in the 40s still. But declining imports and lower cow harvest should be supportive of those coal cow values and getting exports moving up doesn't hurt things either. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to what this sheep market is going to do in 2022. It's been surprising. The lambs have been strong all year long, barely moved down at all in the fourth quarter. At the final sale of the year at the Newell Sheep Yards, we saw most of the lambs selling from 289 to 310, and the slaughter ewes continue to push higher, up another 20 cents to range 177 to 187. There will be a lot for the cattle industry to discuss when it comes to federal policy. We've sure seen a lot of focus from Capitol Hill on the cattle business in the last two years, but nothing has actually made it across the finish line. The House did pass a bill to reauthorize livestock mandatory reporting through September 30th, and they pushed for the creation of a fed cattle contract library. The Senate, though, has not moved any of those bills forward and is still pushing for some type of mandate on negotiated cash trade. They will hold a hearing on cattle markets in January. And after seeing some major triggers tripped in their plan to improve fed cattle price discovery, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association will again take up the issue at their convention in Houston in February. Current policy compels them to look at a regulatory or legislative solution to address price discovery, but at this point they do remain opposed to mandates on cash trade. And how to structure this industry going forward does remain a question with declining cattle numbers, strong demand and increasing packing capacity. Producer leverage will improve, but what level of packing capacity is needed and how much government involvement is needed or wanted? We are going to have to answer that question for the industry. There are certainly headwinds facing cattle producers, but it does look like the next two to three years should bring higher prices. That's going to do it for this month's report. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you have a happy and prosperous 2022. Take care.